All right, we are live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Unity Hour. Um, as always, we are so grateful that you are here today and have taken um, time out of this, which out of your very busy week um, for yourself to really focus on yourself and your development professionally. Um, we're really excited about today's session. Um, but before we get into it, as always, we're going to do a quick little PSA. Um, you know, we build these unity hours for all of you. So if you have feedback, suggestions on um, anything you'd like to see here, um, please, please, please shoot us an email at community at themomproject.com. Um, we are checking that inbox and um, love your suggestions and thoughts because you guys know what you need um, best. Um, additionally, for those of you who might need um, any help, might have been impacted by any, you know, virus related furloughs or layoffs. We also have our unity coaching program that is currently available. Um, we have a stable of amazing career coaches and resume professionals and mentors um, that have um, so generously uh, donated their time to our community and they're um, offering up free coaching sessions um, for people who need it. So we can drop the link to that program in the live chat um, and you can check out, um, you know, what the program's all about and apply. Um, we're here to help. We want to, um, you know, make things easier for you in these challenging times. Um, uh, as always, I guess I didn't introduce myself at the beginning. I'm Katie. I'm on the community team here at the Mop Project. Um, and today's session is the art of networking. Um, this is something that networking is not necessarily a dirty word, but we've heard from a lot of you that it's a bit of a gray area. Uh, people don't know where to begin. People don't know exactly what it means. Um, people aren't sure how to begin networking if they haven't been doing it for 10, 15, 20 years or ever. Um, so, you know, we figured this session would um, clear a lot of that up for all of you. Um, and we are so grateful to have um, Kelly Hoey here today, um, who is an author and um, podcast host of Build Your Dream Network. Um, she is, has tremendous experience and really all the the leading insights that you could possibly need uh, to kind of navigate this world of networking. So um, we're anchoring this uh, whole chat in um, questions that were submitted by all of you. But as always, please, please, please feel free to drop more questions into the live chat. Um, we're checking it and um, reading those in real time so we can pepper some of those questions into this conversation. So we can get started. Hi, Kelly. Hey, how are you? Great, I'm so glad to have you here. Um, and yeah, I mean, we're gonna kick things off um, with just, I think a basic question. Uh, let's start from the top. What defines successful networking? Uh, okay, what's this? Uh, okay, here's where we're gonna start that. Write down on a piece of paper what you think networking is. And if you think it's that dirty, schmoozing, oh my God, I need to do that because I am in need of a job, a business lead. Like if you're like, oh my God, it's this power imbalance, it's this icky thing, like whatever you think it is, the negative ones, <laughs> write it down. And then I want you to rip that piece of paper up once you've written it down. Because to me, Katie, the successful networking is how you show up every day. And every human interaction to me is an opportunity to build a network versus thinking of it as this other thing that we pull out only when we need it. You never know when you're gonna need relationships. You never know who in your network and community of relationships who can help you. So do you show up every day as someone that other people are gonna to wanna to help? And part of the reason, like I think of this in this way that might sound a little bit woo woo or whatever else, I started my career as an attorney. And for any of members of the Mom Project community who know that world and probably know it intimately themselves, uh, you know, your, your time is what you spend. You have to bill hours, your productivity, everything about you is how much work are you doing? At the same time, you're expected to build relationships. I graduated from law school in 1991. Okay, so there was no 
God, there was no BlackBerry for those who remember those. We maybe, oh, we had a Palm Pilot a few years later. Uh, we didn't have the internet, but you had to build relationships. And so how could you do that when you had this conflict of, I need to be behind my desk doing work. And so every phone call, every voicemail, you know, every piece of client work delivered, every little touch point had to be meaningful because I didn't have, like any attorney, I didn't have abundance of time to be running around and networking. So how do you look at it differently? So for all the women on this session, think about your, your, your life and you can think about it in the pre-COVID days, you can think about it, you know, these post-pandemic days where, you know, so many things are restricted. Where are all the touch points in your life where you interact with other people? And there's probably community service, there's probably volunteering, there may be church, there may be a sports league, there may be, you know, I'm, um, mom and me, baby and me, like, like, there's, like, stop and pause. You probably get your hair cut. Maybe you go to a gym. All of those things are networking and chances to build a relationship. So the first thing with, for me, successful networking is taking that old paradigm and that old notion of what networking is and flushing it. Love it. I mean, it's true. I mean, it's true. When you like think about it as like a separate thing you need to work on, it's, it's <laughs> right. Like it, you can weave it into what you're doing all day. That's right. right. It's, we do it every day. We do it however we show up. Mm -hmm. Right. And you, and I know we're going to talk about this later if people haven't, you know, um, been in the workforce for a while, but you know, who were you the person in the workforce when you were working? Were you that collegial team player that others quite might be quite happy to hear from again? Mm -hmm. But we'll get to that. Yeah, no, good insight. Um, do you have any specific do's and don'ts around this that you want to share, or do we want to kind of? Oh, we'll, we'll we'll weave we'll weave it in. Those are those those will those oh. those will come out in in all of this. Yeah, don't <laughs> don't fall back on that old notion of networking. That's we'll leave it there. <laughs> Um, so is somebody new to networking, how should they get started? Should they, like you said, kind of start with people they already know? Always, always start with who you already know, who already cares about you, who already knows what you know, who already knows like the challenges you have and may want to help. That doesn't mean you may not have to build new networks. One of the case studies and examples in my book you know, uh, Vera Lee Crows, she was like moving up the ladder, you know, at one of the big four accounting firms and she wanted to do something different. And she knew her nearest and dearest, the family, friends would be like, are you nuts? You're just about to make partner. What are you doing? Don't give up the job. And so she knew she had to build a new network of like minds. But that's when she already kind of took a look at and said, who immediately around me understands this change? But start with who you already know. And don't assume that someone you already know can't be helpful. So by way of another example, uh, one of my friends, pivotal introduction, came from a personal trainer. You know, So do you talk to those people about what you're doing? Think about who you're interacting with and who they are interacting with. Because this personal trainer was a linchpin and kind of said, oh, I think one of my other clients is involved in that. Shall I find out and let you know? Because I could make the introduction. So are you sharing what you're doing? You know, like, are you sort of crossing these boundaries, so to speak? Because often enough, we think someone is like just my personal trainer, you know, just my hairdresser, just my, you know, the just my category. So we don't share these things. The third example, and this one kind of goes both ways. So, you know, when you think about how you're sharing things with your network, part of the sharing is how are you listening? And how are you taking an interest in somebody else? Because that's a really key pivotal piece. And one of the stories I absolutely love was a um, woman who uh, returned to the workforce. She was an attorney, took time out to have children, returned to the workforce and was working in a smaller firm. Uh, her neighbor understood that she had gone back to work and the neighbor one day was like, hey, you've gone back to work, how's it going? Now think about, you know, just hearing that question and you might go, yeah, you'd say, oh, it's going well, thanks very much, how are you, right? She's like, it's going really well, thank you for asking. And 
this other person, this guy was kind of like, oh, tell me more, right? So when someone gives you an answer, listen in on it. Because when he did that, she leaned into the conversation and she talked about what she was doing at work. It's supposed to like, oh, they're just, you know, we could just bluff it off. Oh, it's, oh, it's just really good. And you know, how are you like, we can shift the focus off herself, but don't be afraid to talk about it. So this woman talked enthusiastically about what she was doing. And the neighbor finally said, oh, listen, you know what? I know how hard your job is. Like when you, you know, so someone understanding somebody else's job, right? Like what goes on in their place of work. And so he said, I know what it's like, you know, like lawyers and how you have to bring in business. And I know how your industry works. He said, and this guy happened to work for a pharmaceutical company. Um, and he said, um, you know what? I know how hard it is. So let me help you out. Let me do something for you. It's probably not big, but it's probably enough to keep these new people you're working for kind of happy that, you, you know, they shows that you got business development chops and stuff. I could leave the story there, but I'm going to give you the punchline on it because it's really kind of funny. Um, that little thing, that little thing you didn't think was going to go anywhere ended up being the silicon breast implant litigation. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> the largest class action at the time in wow. US history. But the point of the story is you can probably picture yourself in similar exchanges mm -hmm. where you didn't ask a next question or you just, oh, work's great. How are the kids? Or work, you know, hey, my job's great. How was your vacation? Like we can, rather than saying, I can have a conversation with my neighbor about my job. And guess what? I can have a conversation that I listen to about their job because who knows? The neighbor might've brought up something that enabled you to tap into someone in your network that you had been wondering how to tap into. So listen, share, don't be afraid of, you know, being enthusiastic about what it is you did or want to do. Yeah, no, I think that's really important. Uh, we, we've said this in the past and we'll say it again, but you know, it's talking about it makes it more real, right? Like as soon as you kind of hear yourself talking about it, I think there's like a bit more of accountability that all of a sudden kind of like, is there like, oh, I'm speaking about this to another person rather than just thinking about it. Um, yeah. But also, yeah, like, I mean, that story tells us. No, no, <laughs> it, crack, it cracks me up to this day because like there's, there's, there is an element of this dude kind of going, oh, it's not going to turn into anything big. Oh no, only the largest class action in US history at the time. Uh, yeah, but anyhow but the point was he wanted to help someone he knew and he knew and understood their pain um and we'll co probably come back and that theme as as we pursue all this other stuff yeah um so kind of building from that um are there nuances um that you can share like around networking depending on the format in person versus digital i know we're kind of in a unique situation <laughs> Um, but would love to hear your thoughts. Yeah. I think these things should work seamlessly and side by side. And too often we think it's like one or the other. Mm -hmm. And there's the, you know, that's the sort of the marketing of ourselves online versus how am I human online? Because uh, we have what, you know, we've seen with generations, you've seen before pandemic COVID, some of the biggest adoption on social networks was coming from you know, the boomer plus generation. Some of the increase in, in real life networking was coming from the younger, the digital first generation. So while one generation was getting off, you know, getting, you know, sort of off in real person online to connect with their network, the other one was saying, I need to figure out how to deal with humans. So put me in a co-working space and give me maker spaces and I want to do, you know, whatever. So I think these things have always been sort of merging to this middle that we work together, you know, both things. So the relationships that you've had in the past or the relationships that you've made in real life, how can you enhance them with the digital touch points and vice versa? How do we use digital to, I want to say, re mim sort of mimic in the way that we would behave in person. So by that, I mean, you know, sometimes you meet someone once and you're instantly friends. Mm -hmm. But don't assume the easy click to connect means that you're connected, right? So don't assume that, you know, following someone automatically enables you to throw a big ask in their face. 
because would you, I'll think Twitter, for example, and I always think of Twitter like a cocktail party. Would you walk up to someone you had just seen and maybe said something at a cocktail party? Would you immediately rush up to them and in a loud voice ask for work? Probably not. So why would you do that on Twitter? And, you know, um, the, the case study, the example I refer to all the time, particularly with social media, is, and, and why I'm a fan of it, you know, for all the flaws of social media, why I'm a fan of it, because for women, it democratizes our access. You know, you show your expertise, you show you the type of person who shares good ideas, you show that, that the person you're willing to engage, people want to talk to you. And we can get into the rooms that were previously closed to us. And one of the examples I use, and I use it frequently, is the author Tom Peters. So Tom wrote In Search of Excellence, best-selling business book for like 40 years. God bless all of us authors would dream for that. <laughs> but Tom is very active on Twitter. And he and I have become friends because of Twitter. And as a result of becoming friends on Twitter, he wrote the foreword to the paperback edition of my book. Now, when I say we became friends on Twitter, that was like a six or seven year journey of following someone, liking their stuff, having that like kind of little banter online, you know, like being the person that someone wants to invite into a conversation and, and it gets excited to see when they come back to a conversation. So think about it that way, as opposed to just being, oh, I can just quick, quick link and get in their face and ask them for that. Like, you know, as a woman, that's the behavior we, you know, avoid when we go into bars and other places. <laughs> So don't be that person online. So think about digital is enhancing in real life. Think about how in real life, you know, in real life can, can, can continue to be engaged by using digital. digital. And the other thing I'm saying, it's advice I give in my book, each of the social platforms, we're, we're the same person, our same personal brand, but we bring a different tone of conversation. So I think of LinkedIn as the office, you know, Facebook is friends and family. Instagram is probably a mixture of both. Um, and Twitter's the cocktail party. So say, say it's something like you're, um, you've just gotten, a, Katie, you've just gotten a promotion. Congratulations. I don't know if the rest of the folks at the Mom Project know that, but I've just promoted you. You know, how, how you would describe that promotion on LinkedIn, and that might be thinking about LinkedIn, that's, that's work. That's, Maybe that's your alma mater from college. Maybe that's your past work colleagues. How you would tell them about a job promotion versus how you would tell your family around the dinner table versus how you would do it if you were hanging out with your girlfriends in a Starbucks. Mm -hmm. There's, it's three, same, same news, same information, but the language is nuanced. And so understanding that with digital platforms, mm -hmm. I think, you know, it will hold you in good stead. Yeah, no, that's important. And I love how you break it down and make it akin to different spaces. Cause I think it's so important. Like, yeah. Less yeah. yeah. Like I always sort of think about physical spaces when I think about, all right, just because it is Twitter or just because it is Instagram or just because it is Facebook or LinkedIn, like those, there's human beings on the others. I want to talk to human beings and just because it's an avatar, or just because it's 280 characters doesn't mean it can't be a human interaction. And how do I make it human? And so part of that for me is the visualization of the physical space. Oh, I love that, that's so powerful. Um, so I guess kind of going a layer deeper on that. So right now with us kind of being in this remote only, digital only space, um, you know, there's a lot of people out there right now that are all of a sudden needing to kind of reignite their networks or build a network. Um, and yeah, I mean, do you have any thoughts about how to really stand out and make an impact um, yeah. in this digital only space we're in right now? Yeah, well, let's, let's just talk about some simple things. First off, you know, the first impression, well, first impression for a lot of people before COVID-19 could have been your digital presence. So before you do anything, Go Google yourself. What shows up, you know? And yeah, like just the first impression is not necessarily the email. It's what they do with it. You know, they go and click over and look at your, you know, and go, what? I don't know this round, you know, blue, black, you know, think about, like, think about the, uh, the uh, blue background, white outline, no face or, 
you know, the headshot that is taken from 20 feet away, like, you know, and, and not enough deal details on a LinkedIn profile to make any sense. It's like, go and say what, if the first impression I send that email, what do people find? So I say the first networking thing is check your online profile and, and make sure it's what you want it to be. And if you need to clean it up, if you need to put things, some things on private, whatever. And I would say, do it across the board because you may be part of niche networks like this one with your kid's school, with after, you know, after school activities, with community, like, is it all working in unison? Because your next opportunity may come from mommy and me, right? It, it may come from that as opposed to the polished LinkedIn profile. So in terms of like where to start right now, I'd say start there. Mm -hmm. Then, um, and maybe this goes back, Katie, to being a lawyer and having that limitations, so, you know, constraints on my ability to network. So, you know, I, I'm, I like to say I'm an inside the box thinker because, all right, Here's the, here's the box we have, what do we do with it? So these are the tools we have. So fix up that online profile, make sure that's working for you. Secondly, these are the tools we have. So when there is a chat function on an event, you know, do, and sometimes they're public and people can see them, do you introduce yourself mm -hmm. to other people? Do you treat it like walking into a conference? Hey, I'm Kelly and I'm from Manhattan. Creative Mornings is an amazing community for this in terms of, this generosity and this dialogue that goes on. Uh, when there is a public chat function, say who you are. Hey, I'm Kelly, uh, I'm an author, I live in New York. My question to the, to, for the panelist is like, because other people are reading that chat function. Right. Now you've networked, not only with the panelists and the moderator and the event organize, organizers, you've networked with everybody, seeing everybody else out there. So start kind of using these imaginative ways of this existing technology. And then the third piece I'd say on this, Kitty, like the, the most brilliant part of all the digital is we now have all the information in front of us. And as digital, as with in real life networking, we all worry about what we're gonna say. Worry about how you're gonna listen. Because with everyone sharing information, you can gather a whole lot of insights on who someone is, what rocks their world, what, what time of day they're busy, you know, and in, in all of that information, you might find a really strong and powerful way to connect with someone that wasn't evident before. Yeah, yeah, that's important. Like you keep hitting on that, the listening piece, like it's not just a one-way thing, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, go back to Tom Peters. He always writes the word listen on his hand when he goes into a meeting. So he actually listens. Um, uh, but yeah, we sort of forget that we leave so much data out there now that, you know, if you just kind of think about someone you want to connect with and the various aspects of their life and go and look, this is sort of when stalking on the internet is the right thing to do, kind of look around and see what they say and do you can get an idea of how to communicate with someone. And it can be as simple as, you know, say you are someone who's actively posting. Some of the people you wanna connect with and talk to about a job, what are they liking and talking about with, with what you're posting? What time of day, you know, back, back in the day when you know, people went into offices, I noticed with someone in my network, she would always tag and like, certain posts of mine at a certain time of day and not later in the day. And then I just sat there and I thought, let me think about her work and her life. And then I sort of started like, okay, I'm going to make a calculated guess. My guess is she goes into the office early, grabs her coffee, sits down and part of before she organizes her day, she does some of her own professional networking on LinkedIn. I bet if I called her about now, she'd answer the phone. Bingo. I was right, right? So it's like, take the, take all, like be like a sleuth, like, you know, sort of Nancy Drew, right? <laughs> like be a little sleuth and sort of put the pieces together and make a calculated guess based on that specific person you're trying to reach. Yeah. I mean, even like, you know, I feel like we got a lot of questions about like cold LinkedIn, you know, connection outreach, which is a whole different thing, but like, yeah. you know, 
do it, put a little, don't just hit like connect, right? Like do some research, like figure mm-hmm. out what you can offer to them. Like, it, you know, yeah. throw it out there. Um, uh-huh. Very powerful, very powerful. Um, so kind of shifting gears a little bit. Yep. Um, seems like a lot of people out there would consider themselves an introvert. Um, but they still need to network. So what sort of tips do you have for introverts that, um, you know, can help them kind of level up their networking profile? Okay. So for all the introverts, here's my first tip. When someone sends you an article that tells you how you can network like an extrovert, I want you to hit delete (laughs) and I want you to ignore it. And here's why. So Katie, in writing my book, I, it's all case study driven. And I selected examples where people, I had seen that they had, um, I wanna say moved up the corporate ladder, landed a board position, uh, cold emailed, cause we can get to the cold email example. They built a book of business, crowdfunded successfully. And I had them work back their stories because for me, the thread that I could see in their lives was networking and networks of relationships and not running around you know, schmoozing madly and handing out business cards, but how over the course of their careers had they purposely built relationships and networks and intentionally networked? Mm-hmm. I didn't ask them one question. I didn't ask anybody what their personality type was. And it wasn't until I was getting the answers back that I was like, oh, great. I've interviewed a bunch of introverts. And like 80% of the people I interviewed in my book are introverts. That's, that's- so. Uh, Yeah, I think in this day and age where we are time poor, where we are 24 seven, where we are bombarded with information, you know, FOMO, all of that kind of stuff, people who are more deliberate and intentional and focused are better network builders. Hmm. Now, We all need someone in our network who's got the gift of the gab because the next time we're all sitting around a table together and it's Uncle Harold who no one wants to sit next to and make small chat with, you're going to want to have that person with the gift of the gab to sit next to them. But do not confuse the apparent ease of working a room with being a good networker. Hmm. For me, a good networker is someone who is caring about other people and has built a community around them that they can tap into and help. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so introverts don't change. <laughs> no, I mean, that's an important distinction. Like, you know, it's like even goes like in a meeting, just cause somebody's talking the whole time doesn't mean they're necessarily saying the right things or right. like that's the best idea in the room. Um, yeah, I think there's power in being intentional and strategic and very deliberate about what you're doing yeah yeah well you know there's sometimes when you do need to throw it all out there because uh like when i think of my own example when i um started a startup accelerator i mean you would have thought i would like had my head cut the chicken with my head cut off running around new york at every single startup event but i needed to figure out which ones were worth my time and I could only do that by standing in the room. So I may have had four or five events in a night, but I would walk in and if I immediately was like, eh, nah, I'm out of here. Yeah. And then I knew where to focus. So sometimes you got to start with that big marketing funnel or that big networking funnel and say, right, here's the, here's the places it's worth me spending my energy, my time, my limited resources. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, otherwise it's like, you know, I'm sort of like a three-year-old child. Why? Why? Anytime someone wants me to do something, I need to understand, you know, who and why and what is going on so that I know it's worth my time. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I feel like even, especially right now, like mm-hmm. everybody's so pressed for time and space to focus on anything. So yeah, that, that yeah. being able to answer the whys <laughs> and ask that question. Um, so um, moving on to the next question, um, you know, I'll, a big part of what we do here at the mom project is helping um, women re-enter the workforce after mm-hmm. taking a pause for two, five, 10, 15 plus years. Um, what networking tips can you share for those who maybe don't 
have active professional connections or have been out of it for for a while and are looking at your midnight to kind of get out there and get back into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, you do have networks and you have networks that can lead to professional opportunities. Don't just assume they're your friends. Don't just assume that it's the other moms in a group. Like listen and talk to other people and let them know what you're up to because that's how you start planting those seeds. And those people who have seen and interacted with you, again, are more invested in your future than, you know, fill in the blank, someone, you know, whatever. Uh, so you have those networks. You have alumni networks and not just ones from college, but there is probably formal or informal alumni networks of places you used to work. Mm -hmm. You know, you can find those on LinkedIn. You can find those on Mighty Networks. You can find those on Facebook. Go and see what they're up to and about. Like, are there, are there those networks there that you can tap into um, and, and leverage and use those? Uh, the other thing I'd say is get really clear on what it is that you're looking for. And why I say that is we're already, you noted, from staying at home, we're all pretty damn busy. Um, really? Like, busy listen, wait, how, how, yeah. did, how did my week get so full? Yeah. Like, God, anyway. Um, so it was like, it's all of a sudden it's like, where am I going going on, on all of this? Um, so you, you want to... Um, you're saying get clear on what? Oh yes, thank you. So I'm like, all of a sudden I was like, where was we going? Thank you. Um, so get clear on what it is you want to ask because, because we are all so busy. Um, someone just landing in an inbox and asking a very general question now creates stress on the person receiving it. Mm -hmm. And the clearest example of that is asking for a job or saying, hey, can you help me? I'm looking for a job. Like if you just stop and pause and think, how does that make you feel? And you're like, I wouldn't know what to do if someone gave it, because it begs a whole bunch of other questions and begging a whole bunch of other questions involves mental energy, which requires physical energy, which nobody's got right now. And so you just gotta, right, there's that level of fatigue, which makes this more urgent. So decide exactly what you need and do not be afraid of being specific. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying, I'm looking for a job, what is the exact job you're looking for? And once you can define what's the exact job you're looking for, you can start thinking about your, in your network, who in your network may or, may or may be likely to be somehow connected in something in that world. So if I said, you know, I'm looking for a job at Goldman Sachs, all right, who in my network is connected in the investment banking world? All right, there may be someone who's connected in at Goldman Sachs, I'll try that route. When that doesn't work, who may be connected in the investment banking world directly? Who may be indirectly? And then who are just people when they say, hey, how's it going, Kelly? It's like, good, I've really got clarity on where I wanna go for a job search. Uh, I really want, and I saw a posting and it was for, um, senior vice president of financial products at Goldman Sachs. And that's the job I want. And they all may look at you and go, great, you got clarity. That's super. Wow. You know, but you've now planted the seed. Yeah. And who knows who they're talking to a day later, two days later, two weeks later, they're like, oh, oh, I found someone at Goldman Sachs. Do you want to meet them? Right. So get really specific. Think of it like a dartboard. When, when you play darts, right? Bullseye. We always aim for the bullseye. No one plays darts to win by firing out on the outer edges, right? You may hit the outer edge, but the point is aim for the bullseye when you're asking your network. Mm -hmm. And then you give them a radius to give you answers. But if you're just sort of out there, I'm looking for a job. Is that Walmart or Walgreens or like, what, what are you looking for? Yeah. And that's too hard for them at any point in time and extremely so now. Yeah, I mean, that's something it comes up, you know, and even past sessions here or from our talent team that's, you know, working to place our community in jobs. It's like when you're applying and kind of telling your why me pitch, you know, why you should be considered for that role. Yeah, the more specific you can get, the easier you can make it on them without having to come back to you with a bunch of questions because exactly like nobody has time. 
now. Yeah, exactly. And, and and again, this goes back like, why not aim for that bullseye? Even if you're talking to your personal hair, your personal trainer, your hairdresser, right? Hey, what's what's going on with your job search? You know what? I've narrowed it down. Here's here's what I'm looking for. They may look at you and go, I have no idea what that is. Right. Or they may say, Oh, my neighbor does that. Yeah. Oh, but she's not at HSBC. She's over at Bank of America. Would you want to talk to her, even though the roles at HSBC? Oh, hot damn, yes, please. Make the intro. So yeah. be specific and don't be afraid of sharing it with everyone. Yep. Yeah. No, that's great insight. Um, so kind of piggybacking off of that a little bit, um, you know, what if you want to kind of re-engage with colleagues or connections that you haven't spoken with in a while? Like, how can you kind of reignite those without coming off as like desperate or like, you know, just like so out of left field, I guess. Yeah, yeah. All right. So let me give you a, the tale of two in-mail messages. <laughs> Okay, so this was, these are personal ones. This happened to me. Um, and they came from around the same time, both from colleagues, former colleagues from when I um, had worked in for a global law firm, uh, both in the capacity of professional development and then in marketing. So one was a marketing colleague and one was associate at the firm who I had been their manager of professional development. And it would probably have been seven or eight years since I'd seen either of them. Okay, so there you got the context. The marketing person, this is all happening on LinkedIn. Okay, so keep everyone visualize that. Hi, Kelly, what are you up to? Or I'm like, oh, this is interesting, right? Personality is showing themselves through. Hmm. I said, uh, I'm well, I wrote a book. Comes back, no way, what's it about? And I'm thinking to myself, we're on LinkedIn. You don't have the courtesy of going and looking at my profile. And then there was like the big juicy ask to help someone out from someone that he wanted to do a favor for. And I was like, hmm, leopard doesn't change its spots, does it, right? And so, right. but okay, so you don't wanna be that person. Yeah. Use the tools, find the information. The second example, okay, let's go, Go back to remember, same same firm, same time period. Hey Kelly, and it was like a it was like a beautiful handwritten note, and it was hey, love to see, love I've been watching what you've been doing, and and congratulations on this that you know, not like saying you have to blow smoke up people's you know what's but she acknowledged what I had been up to, and the career changes. And she said, now, yeah, and any part of it is like, hey, Kelly, you may not remember me. This is when we work together. By the way, everything you've done and your change, everything you've done since, you know, we worked together. Oh, my God, all those changes and da, 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 and whatever. She said, by the way, this is what's happened with my career since we worked together. Talked about how her life had changed. And then, boom, where the intersection was. My life was very much in the startup world at the time. Hers was in the startup world. And she had a question and she said, if we, if, if it wouldn't be, you know, an imposition, here's the question I have. And I'd love, you know, cause Hey, you were the person and she was, I was the person she used to go to with career questions before she said, I kind of would trust your advice on this. And I'm kind of grateful that you're, but anyway, you get the point. Yeah. I was so ecstatic to get, you know, it'd been seven or eight years. And it was really, really nice to get this message. And this was not someone who I was staffed on. I was like her manager of professional development. So I saw her as an incoming associate and then I had to do performance reviews and I had to be like, i ah, sorry, you haven't done this stuff. So it was just on the basis of, you know, who reputation and who showed up at work every day and, you know, kind of was pleasant and collegial and all that, but we weren't buddy pals. So this wasn't like, oh, the guy was a kind of a douche and this woman was nice. You know, who do you trust? Who do you want to give your social capital to? Who produced really good work and was the kind of colleague others wanted to work for? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, this intersection of all this information. So, you know, on a kind of a cold emailing one, one that I think of, a senior executive at Pfizer who I was interviewing, he uh, noted that uh, 
he was meeting for the first time with a new hire who got into the pipeline to be hired at Pfizer because of a very thoughtful cold email. And again, whether it's for new work, like that you're reaching out to a former colleague or for cold email, like doing that research and showing, you know, why you're the one, why the personal interest, what you know about that other person's business, what's, you know, what's going on in their life and the intersection with a very specific ask. Mm -hmm. And that is something people can deal with. And that is something they really do appreciate. Yeah, I, I guess, you know, if you ever get those random messages or whatever, you're just like, no context, just like super blunt. It's like, what? Is this how the whole engagement's gonna go? Right, it's, yeah. So yeah, so I, you and I were chatting before, and, and as I said, I've, I put together a list of resources for all the attendees and, and anyone who signed up and couldn't make it today. And uh, one of those on there is a piece, it was for quartz. I'm gonna make sure I've got it on here. I'm sure I put it on here. Yes, um, it was for quartz. And they, they asked me like, when do you accept a LinkedIn? You know, it, you know, request to connect and whatever. And I said, well, it's really easy for me. Someone doesn't put the context, I just delete it. Mm -hmm. Because now you've given me work to do. How do, right. I know, how do I know you? When did we meet? Whatever. And it doesn't have to be much. It all, it could be very simply like me emailing you after this on LinkedIn and just saying, oh my God, Katie, loved doing the webinar with you. Thank you so much. Um, let me know if there's anything else the mom project community needs for me. Yeah. That's all it needs to be. Right. It doesn't need to be some big long story and all that kind of stuff, but no, those, those random ones on LinkedIn, delete, 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 delete. Yeah, I mean, I feel like maybe they work for some people because they happen every day. But yes, I think, yeah, just even one thoughtful line to accompany it, like clears up a whole heck of a lot. Oh, you, you, like you think if 80, 90 percent of the world is just doing, hey, let's connect on LinkedIn and just following that lazy route. Mm -hmm. That little effort just takes you into another stratosphere. That's so true. <laughs> that is so true, though. If 80 percent of people out there are just hitting the connect button and that's it you're ready by typing in basically anything at all, any context. Yeah, you're ready at the right. time. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's a really good way to think about that. Uh, and that, I mean, that so, It's so sad that the bar is so low, but from all my years, I mean, listen, this is gonna thing that's gonna keep me employed talking about networking because we're humans, we're weird, we're squirrely, we're, what we like one day is not what we like. This is what makes networking hard. Mm -hmm. And there's so much trite advice out there that says, oh, if you just do these 10 things, no, we're human beings. We're weird. Mm -hmm. We're unpredictable. Like it, it, no. And so this is what makes networking hard. It will, and the day you think it's easy, you should probably check yourself and say, am I doing enough? Interesting. Interesting. I mean, yeah, I, it's, yeah, it's, I guess it's something you should constant, constantly be kind of thinking about and revising what you're talking about. You know, we always, we say that to like our community, like whether it's your resume or your pitch or your vision for what you want to accomplish, like yeah. that's changing week to week, month to month, year to year, like, you know. Yeah. Well, and you know what, I'm gonna throw out this idea for when we're all back together again. So years ago, you know, sort of looking and thinking about the friends I hadn't seen, it was like, why am I, oh, here's why I'm not seeing them. They've all had children, they adopted or you know, they had kids or their kid. And I was like, this is why we're not seeing them. What am I gonna do about it? Mm -hmm. So my ex and I used to have these events that I used to refer to as cocktails and kids. Mm -hmm. And it was sort of 4.30 to 6.30, seven o'clock. I made sure there was dinner for the kids around the dining room table. I would do, you know, cocktails for the adults in the living room. And I said to the adults, I'm feeding your children. I'm not feeding you. And <laughs> if you want to get a babysitter for yourselves and drop your kids off at home and meet, you know, my ex and I for dinner at a restaurant where we made a reservation, go right ahead. But otherwise you're all getting kicked out of here at 7.15 because we got a 7.30 dinner reservation, but I wanted to see you. So here's how I'm going to do that. Um, had never crossed my mind to do that sort of thing, but it was like, put the pieces together. Why am I not seeing these people? Right. They all have kids. I can make chicken fingers. I can do that. Um, I can make mac and cheese. I can, I can get kid food in the house. I can make this happen. So 
you know, you always have to think, okay, what would be helpful to someone else? And maybe that helpful thing at some point is going to be helping them, I don't know, clean out a garage. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe networking with your friend is doing their kid's math homework because you're the math person. I don't know. Um, like, that's why it's hard because you've already, you got to take the attention off yourself for a moment. <laughs> It's so true. It's, I mean, it is a give and a take, like. Constantly, on. constantly. Yeah, um, well, cool. So we have a few questions that have come up from the chat. Awesome. Um, as Kelly said, she has curated this amazing resource guide that we are going to email out to everybody um, after this ends. So yeah, a lot more, um, you know, pieces of advice and articles to read that'll really provide you guys with additional clarity and insight because obviously we could go on for hours. Um, yeah, yeah, because yeah, I was, I'll just say before you get to the question, because some of the things when I had looked through the questions in advance, there was questions on how to handle informational interviews, ways to showcase your skills and talents when you're pivoting or restarting your career. Um, there was questions on sending the cold email. There was a question on thanking contacts. There was some question, more questions on online networking. So between blog posts, as well as podcast episodes. And for everyone watching um, and listening later, as I did note to Katie, I have a podcast. I have put the times of how long the episodes are because the last thing anyone here needs to be told is I've got an hour long podcast. I don't have an hour long podcast. My podcast is usually around 10 minutes. So you're gonna see 13 minutes, eight minutes, nine minutes, because that's how short my podcast is. And if you take out the probably minute for the stuff at the front and the back. It's really short, really focused, really simple. That's great. I appreciate that. It's like, <laughs> a, like you can digest it and not like, you know, sometimes you just like, there's so much information. It's like, I don't even know <sighs> one key point to walk away with. So that's right, right, right. Or you put them on and you're like, oh, okay, I'll just put it on while I'm doing ironing or I'm doing cleaning the kitchen or doing whatever. And then you miss like so much of it, you know? So, yeah. Um, okay, so here's an interesting question. Um, how to build a network in a new city where you don't know anyone? So if you're starting fresh. Oh, yeah, that's a that's a terrific question. Uh, well, first of all, too, go back to people you already know, uh, because they may have friends, relatives, they may have moved from there. They may be part of a community that is got locations there. Uh, so that's you know, part of it is like, don't think you don't have a network where you are now. There may be people in your network um, that can tap you into networks there. There may be the networks you belong to before that you could say, right, it, hey, I was really involved with the YWCA in New York City. Is there a, you know, is there a chapter? Is there a location now that I live in Tulsa? Like, find out some of those things you did before. Maybe going back to people who you collaborated, um, uh, volunteered with and saying, hey, I moved and I'm so sorry I'm not there to be there for you. Um, here's where I am now. Do you know of any organizations? Because, you know, not-for-profits talk to each other, you know, community service, um, spiritual organizations, they, they, they know people and who can they tap you into? This is again where I'd say where you're on, you know, programs like this where you can ask questions. That's why I also to say where you are and, and where you're from. And this happened, this exact question happened on an event I did for Creative Mornings. And I said to everyone, well, you're introducing yourself in the chat feature. Please say, you know, who, like say hello and where you're from. And I said, also, when you ask a question, please say where you're from, what you do and what your question is. And one of the attendees said, you know, I'm ex, I'm San Diego. I live in San Diego and I'm wondering how you build a network, net, network in a new city. Mm -hmm. And everyone's watching the chat. And next thing you know, you get, hey, I'm in San Diego. Oh, I'm in San Diego. Oh, I'm San Diego. I can help you. Hey, but here, I'll message you. And it was like, oh, right? Some of this stuff is already there and just find these little nuanced ways, but start with who you know Start with activities you used to do in the city you were in before and you had those close relationships and, you know, see what, see what starts from there. That's great. Um, another one that seems to, um, 
seem to come up in the chat. And I know you said you kind of inc included some points about this and what we're going to be emailing mm -hmm. out. But anything you can share right now on this live stream um, about networking for a new industry that you are thinking about jumping into, but you have like no connections into? Oh, I've been there and done that. I've been there and done that. Well, first of all, you know, some of these industries and stuff, there, there's industry associations, there's organizations, um, you know, go and see what's going on with them. Um, you know, so many people doing free online, you may be able to kind of tap it and watch what's going on in that industry or that association without, you know, having to pay some heavy duty, you know, uh, association fee or conference fee or all that kind of thing. Um, you know, I'm just trying to think like, okay, so when I went back, so I was uh, a lawyer and wanted to get over into the management side and realized, and this was in the same industry, but I didn't have the network to do it because it was entirely word of mouth. It was like, okay, what's it precisely what I want to do? So I did informational interviews to narrow it down. So mm -hmm. I had sort of thought I want to be on the training maybe recruiting, maybe the marketing. And I did a couple of informational interviews that people I already worked with set up and then I could eliminate. I'm like, uh, no, don't want to do that. No, don't want to do that. Okay, this is what I want to do. And then it was, then I thought to myself, all right, I want to do this specific thing, professional development. Where are places that, where's the information on this? Where from my um, Informational interviews, where were the gaps in my resume that I needed to fill? So I went and did some continuing professional studies, which then expanded my network to other people who, oh, I'm in training and development, but I'm in an accounting firm. Oh, I'm, you know, so there was, there was that aspect of it. Uh, and then I found out that, you know, there's some of these organizations in terms of um, where you want to network and meet, you know, the people you want to call future colleagues, they have all sorts, I mean, they have needs for volunteers, even in the digital age. Um, and so getting very much involved in, for me, it was an association of the Bar of the City of New York, but they, they sort of a pivotal industry association. Mm -hmm. And then finding out I could volunteer. And then I could really be networking, doing things that way, but you could still do that even in the digital era. Um, and then also, you know, I, I look for who are the thought leaders? Who were the people talking about these things? Where were their books and blogs and stuff? Because I had sort of absorbed all that information so that then I could reach out to them for advice grounded mm -hmm. in everything I'd already read and learned because then I could ask them a better question. Um, you know, I remember once interviewing someone um, because I, when I ultimately landed the job and I needed to hire like, you know, a mini me. Mm -hmm. And I said, why do you want this job? And, and this person interviewing was like, oh, it just looks like so much fun. And I thought, you haven't done your research. This is, this is not going to happen. But, you know, and it, versus the person who showed up in the interview and I said, why do you want this job? And she like pulled out the Bible in the industry. And she's like, because I've been reading this and I'm really interested in and I'm like, OK, now we're going to have an interview and a conversation. Um, so like live and breathe the job that you want before you get there and volunteering, going to those associations, absorbing all that stuff is a really great way to do it. Yeah. Right. And like, I think as part of all of that, like the last thing you want is to put in all of that time and energy or like, you know, and you get there and you're in it and you're like, wait, this isn't a good fit. So yes, doing all that research up front, learning as Ooh. much as you can. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I want to say, um, you know, part of it for me too, was like doing all that reading and stuff as I met people who could fuel my career search, I now had a way to get into, I now knew, um, how to stay top of mind with them because I was reading all, like, I would like completely immerse myself in the subject matter once I decided that's what I wanted to do. And I went full in. And I didn't assume when I was reading these industry articles that these people that I'd had an informational interview with a week before had read them. I said, I would send them to them and say, hey, thought was just thinking of you. This is a really interesting article on this. Or I would do, um, you know, Google alerts on some of these people because some of these people it was entirely word of mouth how these jobs happen. So I knew certain people were absolutely pivotal. And once I'd met them, it was like, how do I stay top of mind with them? So their firms, their names, I had Google search, Google alerts. And so when it would come up, I'd be like, oh my God, congratulations on that recognition. 
And they would come back and like, oh my God, thank you. You know, how are you doing? Oh, you know what? Oh, I think I saw something the other day. And right. So it was like, I found ways, but one of the key things was that I didn't assume that these people in these really busy jobs were able to read all the information that I was reading. And so I would send them things and, you know, sometimes they answered, sometimes they didn't. And sometimes they came back and they were like, oh my God, I'd never see this one. Thank you so much. And who, do, who looks like the hero then? And then ultimately, I mean, the other upside of this is when you do land the job, you now have the industry network. Mm -hmm. You now have got all the people to tap into, um, you know, to help you get up to speed of what's going on, you know, competitor firms or other companies. It's not just landing the job. You can now do your job better because you have this collegial network of other people in your field. That's that, yeah, that's really interesting. Like you're doing that much work up front, but it will come back and help you then. Yeah, oh that's really Yeah, yeah, yeah. Powerful. Help, help me on more than a few salary negotiations, let me tell you. <laughs> that's a whole different conversation, which I'm sure we could probably set up one of oh, these. Oh yeah, well, but once I built this rapport with these people, I could call them. How yeah. many people, hey, how many people you got on your stuff? Yeah. Hey, there, I, could you just tell me, is your salary within this range? Oh yeah, I, I had more than enough industry, like direct line industry information to go to my boss with to help him negotiate to get me a better salary. Oh yeah, truth be told. Um, awesome, okay. So I'm looking and I know we only have a couple minutes left. So I guess, you know, before we wrap things, just if you have any final piece of pieces of advice that you want to share with everybody that's tuning in today, um, we'd just love to hear that. And then, um, yeah, I mean, this has been super, I think you've really offered a lot of, um, of insight about just like where to begin and to help us all understand, like, this is something you, you already are doing, whether you realize it or not. Um, but yeah, I would just any final pieces of advice or words of wisdom. Yeah, like just like just take a pause and think about all the relationships and networks you have and how you're nurturing them and how you're looking after them. And some of the things we just need to do right now is just check in on each other. So some of the best networking you can do is just like literally, as I like to say, JCI, just check in um, and see how people are. Um, you know, if you haven't seen someone post on Facebook for a few days and you're used to regularly seeing their update, just send them a little direct message. Hey, haven't seen you in a while. Hope everything's okay. Nothing more than that. And that, you know, letting other people know, like you want any communication that you're sending out, like someone sees your name, you, you want that rush of that warm feelings of human emotion. And so, you know, just check in with people. And so that's what I would just say. And, and you know, kind of be, be the person they wanna hear from more than anything else. Uh, Cause I think some of the ways we treat each other right now is gonna have a longer impact than, you know, this time that we're spending in isolation and quarantine. That's for certain. Um, no, that's that's really important. Um, yeah, just check in. I think people check in. people need it right now too. So that's really really great. Yeah. Um, well, Kelly, thank you so much for this. Um, everybody on watching, we will be sending um, her follow up guide um, to you all after this. Um, and don't forget to check out her book and her podcast, Build Your Dream Network, um, if you guys want to dig into even more tips. Um, but yeah, thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, we will see you again next week. And, uh, for those of you that are celebrating this weekend, have a wonderful mother's day. Um, right. Thanks again, Kelly. Thank you.